hydraulics kind of talked about that and what you can do with a solid lifter on a hydraulic camshaft. Now we'll talk about uh, materials of what we're doing. So if you look right here, I kind of drew this up. This is your normal bearing. So if you're ever hearing about bearingless or a bushed lifter, what they're talking about is this is normally your axle right here, right through the center. Show you the lifter. So that's your axle right there. That's your wheel. This is your wheel. And in, in between there is a little Torrington bearing, just these little needle bearings. Um, if you've ever broken a lifter, and breaking lifters is fairly common, um, especially if they don't have the, uh, enough valve spring on them or have too much valve spring on them or don't have the right push rod. We talked about push rods, deflection, how the push rod sends the lifter off or sends the valve into a loft area. A lot of little problems there, but it, all that stuff adds up. And you break that wheel in this lifter and it sends those little itty bitty bearings throughout the entire motor and just peckers everything all up. There's a little, there's a little pecker marks on your connecting rods, bottoms of your pistons, cylinder bores, everything because all that material, those bearings just flies everywhere. The bearings just playing out are strong enough. So uh, what the current trend is and what we've really helped us out in all of our drag week stuff all the way back in uh, 2012, 2013, 2013 is when I really swapped everything all over to everything being bearingless. No bearings in lifters, no bearings in rocker arms, no needle bearings in anything. Want everything to be bushed. So instead of that bearing that's right there, they just put a solid bronze bushing. Now the bushings are pretty pretty tricky. Um, there's a lot of different material and there's a lot of science behind all that. I'm not really interested in it. I just know what that this thing works and lasts better with that bushed lifter. All right, and we can do that now on hydraulics so the hydraulics become better but definitely do it on this in the solids because as the low profiles get more aggressive they really get uh, a harder on that bearing and that's why those bearings will sometimes fail all right if you go back to our uh, uh, lashing valves video and i tell you you're only just checking to see if anything's broke could care less if this thing was a 1,000th or 2,000th difference and you're checking valve lash, who cares? If this thing is 10 or 20,000th different, you better go find out what's broke. And a lot of times it's gonna be lifter wheel is going away. But if this lifter wheel breaks or has any problems uh, with the bushing in there, uh, it just sends a few pieces, few bigger pieces in the pan, not nearly as big a deal as sending a whole shrapnel full of uh, needle bearings in there. So really like to have all the bush lifters. Now you do have to have lots of oil to that lifter. It needs to have good oil pressure, good um, uh, volume to keep everything cool and well lubricated, which in my personal opinion is the other reason why I'm not a big fan of the Keyway lifter because these really are minimal oil that can go around the band come up through the hole, then it's gotta to go to the next lifter, go around the band. So I mean, by the time it gets all the way down the end, a lot of times we'll have, if we use these, we'll need to put oil feed hole lines, oil feed lines in the front, and then somewhere near the about three quarters of the way into the back of the lifter valleys. So we get oil back there because not enough oil ends up flowing all the way through. The back lifters always have problems if you don't have these oil lines over there. But Never have the problem on a keyway style with this type of big groove. See how much bigger that groove is in the oil galley. Oil galley is full diameter. This is getting a lot of oil through it. Much uh, better for the you know that ultimate duration stuff. Now let's also talk uh, just real quickly about the lifter wheel size. Uh, common Chevrolet lifter size is going to be 842 common Ford size is 875 that's stock from the factory so as we continue to go bigger diameter lifters the reason for bigger diameter is could care less about this diameter that really is not the deal what the deal is is we're trying to get a bigger wheel now this bigger wheel makes I'll talk to you about the lifter why the lifter likes it first we'll talk about why the camshaft likes it later the bigger wheel we can put a bigger axle in it, it's stronger, more durable. We can put a bigger bearing in it, stronger, more durable. Point blank. That's all the lifter cares about.
This thing's going up and down, rolling on this wheel. We just want it to live, live the best that it can. So on all my SMX stuff, we're in a 904 or, 90, or 937 tie bar style lifter. I'll do them in a keyway, 1062, 1130, if you want to go that big. I mean, there's a lot of stuff there. Makes really big wheels. Uh, which is better, softer on camshaft profiler. I'll talk about that later. But uh, that is the nuts and bolts of what we're looking at for lifters. So think about that keyway style. If you ever hear that, that's what it's talking about. Uh, 937 Jessel or keyway lifter, uh, 1062, whatever you're going to come up with, one inch. A uh, lot of different, a uh, little different uh, combinations that the, the lifter and camshaft people will come up with. But that's what we do here. That's why we're doing that. Uh, I hope that is some good information for you. And we're going to be doing, uh, I think, rocker arms next. So we'll talk about that part of the valve train and then finally go to the camshaft. So I'm Steve Morris, Steve Tech. Have a great day.